Dr. Dash joined? Yeah, he has joined. Yeah, thank you, sir. What about Padma Kumar and Padmanabh Kamat, Prabhavati? Yes, sir, I joined, sir. I have also joined, sir. Oh, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, sir. Hello, Dr. Ainga, Dr. Patil. <laughs> nice to yeah. see all of you all, sir. Yeah. And I think it's wonderful, uh, this thing for the, for the graduates. Yeah. Yeah. Your audio is bit. Yeah, yes, sir. Now I am audible, yeah. sir. Now you are better, yes. Yeah, yeah. thank you, sir. Thank you. Ravi, good evening. Good evening to all the chairpersons and moderators. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. It's, a, it's a really nice initiative by you and Dr. Iyengar. Uh, I think for our postgraduates, yeah. it's a beautiful uh, this thing. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. think how to write a theory and how to answer questions in the practicals. Uh, I think the practical tips will be very helpful, sir. The main man behind this is uh, Dr. Padmanabh Kamat. <laughs> oh, great, should, great. You should thank him. Thanks uh, very much to him, the brains yeah. behind. Yeah. <laughs> he has organized and uh, we are part of it. <laughs> great, sir. Thank, thank you. you, sir. <laughs> thank you. Who's behind? Thank you, Dr. Padmanabh, <laughs> also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think uh, it's wonderful to have uh, me uh, to have such sessions it will be really yeah, nice definitely uh, directed to especially to the post graduates i know yes because uh, i think sir in fact i mean i i'm sure in most hospitals you know we become uh, they become busy with such daily routine and just a few months before the exam suddenly they realize they have to write a theory paper and they don't know the art of writing and we just of course we have to teach them uh, in the in that limited time to give the maximum information yeah. Which I think the examiners, what that's what they expect. Definitely. Yes, sir. I think you all will be covering that. When, uh, it'll be very, very helpful. Yeah. I request all the postgraduates to tune in to listen to this program. Hello, Namaskara. Ah, Namaskara, Namaskara. Nagraj Desai. <laughs> Thank you for joining and encouraging us. It's always there. Yeah. <laughs> Shall we start at exactly at 8 or sir? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good evening to all my colleagues as well as the friends and also the postgraduate students. I request uh, others to mute their uh, microphones kindly. Thank you. So we have assembled here to an important topic for the DM and DNB exam going students. Before that, my heartfelt greetings on the eve of March 8th, which is International Women's Day, and my greetings to all my lady colleagues, as well as the lady postgraduate students, and all the best to all of them once again. And uh, this topic was suggested by Dr. Padmanabh Kamath, head of the Department of Cardiology at uh, KMC Mangalore, and rather he's the main brain behind this program because as he has seen many students of DM and DNB were not able to clear the theory exam almost to the extent of hardly 30 to 40 percent used to pass others uh, they could not so this was the reason be behind why he just uh, wanted us to have the discussion on this from all the senior people and during our days, our postgraduate days, 
the theory used to be corrected by our uh, examiners who used to come for the practical and almost they used to correct whenever we were presenting the cases and they used to point out what were the mistakes were done by us in the theory examination especially if they are, we are on the borderline probably the theory would have helped us to clear that that advantage was there with all of us whereas that is not the case now because there is a central theory checking is there both at the dnb level as well as probably at the uh, rajiv gandhi university and other universities which are conducting the dm cardiology courses so what uh, i have gone through the prospectus of the dm and dnb cardiology it's very very beautiful and uh, gives a thorough description how the training has to be done to the given to the post graduates how many general clubs they have to do seminars they have to do how many interventions they have to do everything is there in detail and including the ethical and the moral behavior of the students but if we follow that definitely we are going to send a very good ethically morally bound clinically excellent cardiologist to the society uh, and to prepare for this where they have to clear the theory so we have want to know what are their difficulties and whether is there any pitfalls in the system what is uh, actually there uh, whether how to improve it both at the students level as well as the examiners level with this intention professor ayengar who is an excellent teacher in cardiology a very good academician has contributed a lot to the cardiology literature in most of the fields and he is a, a my philosopher as well as a guide and very senior friend of mine and we have worked together for almost 20 years with this uh, uh, rather uh, he is a very good clinician uh, a senior most teacher who has visited many universities for dm and dnb examination he is a better guide to give all of us uh, to both the students as well as those who are becoming examiners how to formulate the questions and what we are supposed to expect from the students with this in mind and we have also got a great panel of senior teachers both as moderators dr padmanabh kamath is there with hod of cardiology at kms mangalore dr padma padma kumar who is the hod of cardiology at kms manipal and we have also got very good chairperson senior most teachers Uh, dr prabhavati is there dr pk dash is there who has almost uh, developed the satyasai institute and was the main pillar behind the dnb board rather he helped a lot for the training of the dnb students as well as for the uh, advancement of the uh, training course and also dr vijay raghav rao is there from uh, um, hyderabad gandhi medical college with this in mind now i request Professor Angar to go ahead with this speech and to guide the both the students as well as the teachers. Thank you, sir. Hello. Thank you, Dr. Pradeep. Yes, sir. Uh, please permit me to share the screen. Yes, sir. can see the screen remember the screen yeah um, whether my introduction was audible sir yes 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 sir yeah. yes sir yes, yes. thank yes. you thank you very much yeah yeah uh okay Thanks, uh, Dr. Party, for those kind words. Uh, Thank you, sir. Chairman and uh, distinguished uh, panelists, then dear students and ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm going to talk on approach to theory examination in this postdoctoral cardiology course. And first things first, of course, Dr. Party has preempted in this uh, from all the. male population of this meeting to the female audience uh, of this uh, meeting uh, greetings on international women's day 
Now, this topic, uh, Dr. Padmanath Kamath uh, asked me a week ago to give a talk in this topic. And you know that it is difficult to say no to Dr. Padmanath. And I accepted it. Then I found it is equally difficult to prepare this topic. And so I approached two of my colleagues for help. And one was happy to shed some light. And it was by no means a tiny contribution by another friend of mine. So thanks to Dr. Kiran and Dr. Tiny for those uh, tips on this uh, talk. Now, one thing that is available in abundance uh, at no cost, advice. And is it easy to advise the wise? And you students here are all wise guys having gone through your graduation, post-graduation, and doing a super speciality. So it will not be very difficult to go through this talk. And we have Mahaguru sitting there in the chair, as well as in the panel, we'll have a great amount of input from them. Now I must uh, make a disclosure before I start my uh, presentation, because our relation should be more honest and sincere. And to be frank, I have never expelled in my theory examinations. So keep that in mind. Now, if I put the whole cardiology course into an abstract form, the objective is, of course, to be a good human being, to be cardial to your colleagues, and to become a competent cardiologist. Now, the first two things, that is being a good human being and cardiology to your colleagues, you have been going through it since your graduation days, post-graduation days, and I'm sure it continue to do it. Now the focus is to become a competent cardiologist. And what are the methods? You have to go three years of residency program and test yourself at the theory examination and practical examination. And the results of course depends on your performance. And the conclusion of course is unequivocal. There is no substitute for hard work war work, lab work, library visits, and case discussions. We know that wars are the greatest of the laboratories in the world. So both theory and practice are important in your training. And to quote Sir William Osler, to study the phenomena of disease without books is to sail an uncharted sea. While to study books without patients is not to go to sea at all. So theory and practice both are equally important. Now let's focus on the topic that the theory examination, the bottom line is preparation and practice. Now we roughly divided this into pre-theory examination period and post-theory examination period. And arbitrarily this theory examination period before we appear for examination can be divided into three parts, three periods rather, long-term preparation, intermediate preparation and immediately before the examination or a few days before the examination, what you should do. Now, long-term preparation, in fact, it starts the day you join the course or rather it might have started much before you join the course when you are preparing for your NEET examination. Only all we have to do is escalate the degree when you start the course. And one of my teachers by way back in 1974, told me when I was doing my post graduation, make reading your hobby. When you read it as a hobby, you enjoy reading and retain most of it. When you read it as a compulsion, it is rather difficult. So all of you should try to make reading a hobby, with reading your medical books as well as normal. Now reading is after all an incredibly inexpensive hobby that provides so many benefits. Now, long-term preparation, you have to get hold of the standard textbooks. And of course, most of us would recommend Brown Ward, Perlov, Moss and Adams, and Pickenbaum. These are the basic minimum books you must have. And in addition, you want to read more, you can add to this list of books. Then you must select few journals to read regularly. You must mark a day, probably in a week, or a particular time in a day to read journals. And pick up journals like uh, Jack, Circulation, European Heart Journal, New England Journal of Medicine, Lancet. And don't forget Indian journals, Indian Heart Journal and Jappy. You get very nice articles 
about our Indian data or Indian studies by various authors, even some international authors like, will be writing in this journal. So we must be aware of what is happening in our country. But of course, you must keep uh, limitations in mind when you're reading any of these journals. Then now it's the digital world. So you identify some webinars. For example, you get excellent webinars uh, from, from Heart.org, Medscape. Heartfield Association of India has been conducting uh, excellent courses on the web and eSpace. These are some of the websites where leading experts in the field uh, all over would be speaking. And some of these are available on demand too. So we must find time and try to attend these. And uh, when reading, there are two types of reading. One is, uh, you know, you read from first page to the last page of a book. For example, you take broad work. Some of my colleagues used to do that. They used to say that every week I must cover, say, 40 pages, 50 pages, or four chapters, five chapters, and they would finish it in a few months, and they would revise again and again for the exam. And of course, I could never do that. I used to do basically, in which I would recommend very strongly is case-based reading and lab-based reading, whether it's a cat lab or a non basic lab-based reading. For example, if you see a patient in the ward of, let us say, for example, uh, the CTGA, so go back and read everything, starting from embryology, clinical findings, clinical examination, ECG findings, EPO findings, how do you treat, what is the surgery, and what is the follow-up. So that should be uh, basically, you should not forget. If you see any case on a particular day, something interesting, something new, you must read everything about it. Then the lab-based reading, for example, you witness an intervention in the lab. For example, somebody is doing left main stenting or bifurcation stenting. Go back and read everything about it. The uh, classification, let's say, bifurcation lesions, how you deal with. So this would probably help you retaining things for longer time than reading first page to the last page of the book. In addition to this, of course, you will have to do follow the training program laid on by your department your heads. And when it is being done, suppose your colleague is presenting something, doesn't mean you should not read anything. You should also read so that you take part in the question and answer sessions and the discussion. And when doing all these readings, please do not forget to read the medical history. It is important to know about our pioneers in cardiology, their life, and their history, and their achievements, and their work pattern. And also, it's important to learn about common things first, common diseases, common clinical problems. Again, to quote one of my teachers, used to say, rare forms of common diseases are commoner than common forms of rare diseases. So be familiar with- And it doesn't mean that you don't read about rare diseases. We should, but there is no excuse not to know everything about common diseases and common problems. Then we move on to the intermediate term. This is when you have finished a few weeks or few months of your training. Then you have to appear for, for example, appraisal exams, and then finally, of course, the final exam. During this period, what you should do is uh, go through, anticipate test questions. For example, go through the question papers of previous years, look at the recent advances in clinical trials, and form a group with your colleagues and to draw out possible questions so that each one of you can prepare answers for these different questions and share the answers with each other. It is important to form uh, sort of discussions with your friends because discussion is very is another important form of learning or another important way of learning well. Then practice writing. So prepare answers for these possible questions and try to write because you'll have to write some of the questions, uh, answer them in the given time. So you must always try to time and write these uh, answers and practice and prepare graphic illustrations. Now recently, if you see many journals come out with what is called the central illustrations or the infographics or the graphic illustrations. So look at this, that will give you the gist of the whole article. All the things will be there or they'll be summarizing the whole thing in that picture. So from this picture, you should make out a simple line diagram 
and uh, store it so that we can utilize it at the end. Then it's also important when you are needing the exam to look at some hot topics. And I have made a list of some of the hot topics. It is not an exhaustive list or a comprehensive list. You can always add few more or delete some and add uh, some other uh, uh, topics. Now, one is artificial intelligence in medicine is coming up in a big way. And you have a very nicely written chapter in the new Brown World, which I strongly recommend all of you should read. Then social inequities in medical care is again making a lot of noise all over the world. And we have a lot of papers on this in various journals. Then gender bias in medicine, since the time uh, Adam and he arrived on the earth, this debate on gender bias is going on and it will continue to be there. So this also will find a lot of literature is not only in the patient care, it is amongst the doctors, amongst the articles that appear in the journals. So we have gender bias all over. Then we have, of course, we have gone through a uh, horrid uh, period of COVID-19. So we should know everything about COVID and how it affects the cardiovascular disease. Then imaging is coming in a very big way with the CT, MR, you have intravascular ultrasound, OCT, etc. And uh, cardiac amyloidosis is something that has appeared recently. And we have had an excellent lecture by Dr. Bhagavane in our last session where she talked about the cardiac amyloidosis. Now, let me say a few words about these uh, last three, which I have marked differently here, the word each about these. Now, uh, COVID-19 cardiovasculars, you're seeing the, the toll, the death toll has crossed 6 million as on yesterday. And how it affects the cardiovascular, it is either through direct ACE2 mediated injury or hypoxia or microvascular thrombosis or systemic inflammation or autoimmune reaction. So this is a nice paper in circulation research. It's an open access article, so all of you should read about this. Uh, paper. Then you have the another uh, large database where they compared 153,000 individuals with COVID-19 with controls, and they found that risk at the end of one year, they were at very high risk for several vascular disorders like dyspnea, inflammatory heart disease, ischemic heart disease, cardiac heart disorders, tumor disorders, and overall maze and any cardiovascular, they were at much higher risk as compared to the controls. Then going on to uh, cardiac amyloidosis, this is just a patient, a 77-year-old patient who came with dyspnea and palpitations. When we evaluated, we found that he had AT fibrillation, which low voltage in the limb leads, pseudo infarction pattern in the chest leads, and it show severe concentric LVH, which is in discordance with the low voltage of the CG. Then longitudinal strain showed that there was a apical sparing, and uh, the LG imaging showed diffuse uh, endo subendocardial and transneural uh, enhancement. And this is the pyrophosphate imaging showing great free taste uptake by the heart. If you see, this is much more dense as compared to the drips here. So he was confirmed to have ATTRCM by endomyocardial my, my biopsy. Now, this is important to, this is a diagnosis pro probably which you have missed so far. And it's important to pick up these diagnoses because there is an effective treatment. And I understand in India, this particular company, which is manufacturing the drug, they are offering it free till it is going to be available in India. So, you should remember the prevalence of PTTR is though uncertain, which has been from various studies that there's a prevalence of about 13% of PTTR CM among patients who have heart failure with preservation function, 16% among those undergoing tower or systemic severe aortic stenosis. And 5% among patients with presumed hypertrophic cardiac. So, in all these groups of patients, we should try to look for ATTR CM. And there are a diagnostic criteria laid on, which is easy to do pyrophosphate. Once the is, uh, normal IgG is there, but pyrophosphate 
scan shows rate two or more, then the diagnosis is established. So that's about your preparation in the immediate way. Then what do you do just before the examination, few days before or the day before examination? So you should revise quickly glassing through your notes. That means you should make notes on important topics. You should make, as I mentioned, the graphic illustrations or infographics or the central illustrations for a particular topic. And you can go through the books, even like Brown Ward, where you look at the headings or subheadings of the books and look at the pictures and tables, which will help you in revising it a little bit earlier. It makes it easy. Then previous day, of course, you should eat well and sleep well, and you should stay calm and cool when you go for the exam. Of course, that is easier said than done. Now, when you go to the examination hall, of course, reach there, be punctual, be in the examination hall with necessary paper and materials. When you get the question papers, don't start off writing immediately. Read the questions and the instructions carefully. Take few minutes. Then prioritize your answering the questions. Start answering the questions which are easier, which you are very familiar, which you are very confident, so that you can finish that those questions early and deal with the difficult questions later, giving more time. The other policy should be not to leave any question unanswered. Then, of course, English is not our mother tongue, but we must pay attention to grammar, spellings, and punctuations. And most of us are very good in communications, even in this foreign language. To avoid mistakes, try to use short sentences and deep sighs. Now, precision is the up word, up word now. Precision medicine is the word, so we must be precise in most of our dealings. Then, when writing, try to quote references if you can. It is not easy because all of us don't remember the you know, journal, the year, volume, etc. But you can always refer to, say, recent paper which appeared in this journal. At least you can remember the journal. Or you can remember the author, or you can remember the name of the particular trial. You can mention that and quote it. And don't forget to quote Indian work. So please read Indian work in our journals, as well as some of what the work Indian work has appeared in the international journals. You must read them and try to quote. There are a few don'ts. One is don't add your answer. Examiners are usually quite adept at detecting student laughing. They not ready for elaboration of the obvious. The other thing is avoid the kitchen sink approach. Many students simply write down whatever they know about a particular topic without relating the information to the question. So this should be avoided for this will be quite annoying to examine. Now, another important part of your daily writing is handwriting. We should write, of course, clearly, legibly, if necessary, by taking a little more time to write this. Because it's irritating for the examiner if he or she has to strain to read what has been written. Because the examiner has many answer sheets to correct. Handwriting need not be beautiful, but it should be legible. Remember, writing is a democratic art and is the least aristocratic of arts. So you can easily modulate to some extent the handwriting. Now, these are some examples of handwriting of some of the great personalities. This is Albert Einstein's handwriting. And this is one of the four instances in which he is known to have written, handwritten the famous E equal to MC square. Now, if you see his handwriting, it is not beautiful, but it is clearly legible. So that's what is required. And incidentally, this letter was sold in an auction for $1.2 million. Then we come to our own Sir William Osler. If you look at his handwriting, it looks beautiful, it looks nice, but it is rather a bit difficult to read. And in fact, somebody defined doctor as one who cannot read his own handwriting. But most of the doctors now I see have good handwriting. And as I mentioned, it may not be beautiful, but it should be legible. You can take a little more time, but write it legibly. Now, my writing answers practice line diagrams and use them 
in your writing analysis very possible, particularly echo diagrams, vigorous diagram, hemodynamic tracings, pressure volume loops, embryology, vascular information. These have to be practiced. And then you can easily draw them because if you draw an accurate diagram, it immediately tells the examiner that you have understood the basics. And try to use algorithm when necessary. Again, it is not easy to make an algorithm in the examination hall. You have to have prepared algorithms during your long term preparation. Whenever possible, have headings, subheadings, and underline all the important points. So the bottom line is underline, which makes it easier to correct. And it also shows the examiner that the student knows what to highlight and that is thinking in an organized manner. Now, these are the diagrams of which I say that you must master. Because diagram, pressure volume, loop relationship, the cardiac action potential. So try drawing these, practice this, and even if I, you're woken up in the middle of the night, you should be able to draw these things with your sleepy eyes. So master these diagrams, understand them. It will make things easier for you in understanding hemodynamics and understanding electrophysiology. I was telling you about the uh, central illustration which appeared in some of the journals, which is a good thing. You must always see it, pick them up, store them, and of course, this will be difficult to draw in the examination hall. What you should do is based on this, you should make a simple line diagram. So this is the example of figure of you know, pathways for the treatment of Now, based on this, you can do, and I try to do one and show just to show an example. You should make it simple like this, where you can write, draw a few lines and line diagrams and make like this. So based on the original diagrams, illustrations, we can make simpler line diagrams so that it becomes useful for you to revise as well as to produce the examination hall. Of course, in this pathways the admission is not ready to mention the passion to the process. Now, we said that it should be your policy not to go any question and answer. Suppose there's a question you know nothing about the topic. Here I have written that even if you know nothing about the topic, write something. So this is a big paradox. If I'm saying nothing, but you say something. It is possible that even if you don't know anything about the topic, you can write few words, make an attempt, if necessary, by guesswork, because you have gone through cardiology for three years, you've seen patients, you work in the wards, you have worked in the labs, so you can guess and try something to write. Or recall some patient scenarios, some time ago, which you had come across in the wars or in the meetings, conferences, discussion, etc. I'm sure you need to write a few words. It's important that you write something, even if you don't know anything about the topic by going through this exercise. Because the examiner also knows that if it's a difficult question, you'll be sympathetic and you'll give some marks where written there something, but you can't assign marks unless you have written something there. With blank paper, you can't do any marks. So write something about the topic which you know so much. Now complete all your answers and keep some time for revision at the end. So it's important to quickly revise so that you will not miss any major things in the end. Now while writing answers, it's also important if you can use some Quotations, some impactful statements which you have read in the journals or video articles or some original papers, some interesting phrases judiciously. And you can make use of some mnemonics too. Mnemonics, again, be careful, don't make too many mnemonics because you'll be difficult to remember the mnemonics. And also, you should take them from standard books or journals. I think one journal which gives so something about mnemonics is Annals of Internal Medicine. When you have time, you can go through them. You can find something which you find difficult to remember. If there is a mnemonic, try to capture that and keep it. Now, just to give you some uh, interesting statements, uh, 
I am big biased towards FH, so I'll tell you about familial hypercholesterolemia. Familial hypercholesterolemia is different because you never find an individual, you always find a family. So this tells you the importance of cascade screening or the family screening when you come across a patient of FH. So then there is another statement, is acute coronary syndrome in young patients a canary in the coal mine for familial hypercholesterolemia? It means when you see a young patient, with atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, please suspect FH. Then we have heard quite a lot about the residual risk in atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. As well, lipids are concerned, even after the LDA is controlled, patient might continue to have atherosclerotic events. One is lipoprotein DKA, is not to be daily. Other one is hypertriglyceridemia. Triglycerides are known to be the ugly stepsister of LDL cholesterol. So some of these are interesting to remember. It also, if you write these, the examiner will know that you have scanned quite a bit of literature on this particular topic. Exercise, of course, you do not stop exercising because you're old. You grow old because you stop exercising. So we can use this when you're writing about prevention, cardiology and aspect. Of course, you have some questions on statistics. Uh, uh, Dr. Peter Slight told about the subgroup analysis. He said subgroup analysis are fun to look at, but don't believe them. So these are some of the interesting statements. And mnemonics, as I mentioned you, be selective. Don't use too many mnemonics, mnemonics because you do not remember the mnemonics. This is, of course, the sky staging of the cardiogenic shock, A, B, C, D, E. A is at risk, B is the beginning, C is the classic, C, D is deteriorating, E is extremes. Then, of course, there is a mnemonic for implementing causes of atrial fibrillation, fibrates, and they're all given here. Then, after answering, time permitting, if you have time, particularly if these are long but I say questions, you must talk about recent advances clinical trials or ongoing trials. And if you have time, you should project your own view on the subject with justification. And you can talk about the challenges which you're going to face in that particular aspect of the uh, subject or what is the future that holds for this particular subject. Now, uh, I try to answer one short question as an example. I this is, of course, after 37 years, uh, the first time I wrote an answer to a simple question. This was the question, discuss the phases of Ralph Salva manual. This, I think, has been quite frequently in most of the question papers. And here, what I wrote, and what you should do is you should draw the diagram. So you should practice this diagram like this. You should see the normal response, see what is the abnormal swath, absent or shoot, and stray away response. And you should describe, because here it's to discuss the phases, so you should write on all the phases and what is phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four. And then you try to write down the clinical application of this Vasalua menu. And uh, this, unless you do this practice, you will not be able to draw these diagrams. And I think the time given for this short question in the question paper was, I think, eight minutes eight or nine minutes. And of course, I took about 15 minutes to write this, but I'm sure you can do better with your experience uh, and current practice. Now, theory exemption, what does an examiner look for? It's more basically the content or the substance or the core of your answer. Have you answered the question properly? Of course, you will look at how it is presented, how we have organized the answer, how is the handwriting, is it easily visible, or does it have to strain to see what you have written? If you highlight, is the highlighting is there, the correct diagrams are there, and correct algorithms are there. And you also will assess your ability to project your answers in a given time. Of course, most of the examiners take into consideration when they frame a question that they expect that particular question to be answered in a given time. 
or sometimes they give you a difficult question just to see that they're able to organize your thoughts and write in a given time. So this all requires, as I mentioned, the key points of practice and preparation. So this is all about the pre-theory. Once you finish theory examination, it doesn't mean the end of uh, your examination. Um, then of course, there are two streams. So I thought that Dr. Patil said now it is more or less similar because as for the DNB, the national board is concerned, only successful candidates of theory examination go for examination. Whereas uh, in game, it used to be only all those who appeared used to go for the practicals. Whatever it is, you must prepare for the final hurdle before that is the practicals. And after finishing theory examination, I recommend that you must go to your uh, theory questions again and try to correct your deficiencies where you have missed something, where you have written something wrong. Now, Coming towards the end of my talk, to what I have talked to you, this is an informative talk and not a prescriptive one. So do not make any drastic changes in your approach at this age and stage of your life and career. And take whatever has been told here that is applicable and that is which you can adapt into your sort of uh, practice. And as for the rest, you can click the delete button. So we can reject that. Now, this is the uh, central illustration of my talk. This is what I tried to make. Um, this is the cardiology theory examination. There are two things. One is the long term preparation that includes reading, textbooks, journals, discussion with your friends, teachers, making notes, diagrams, and practicing. That is the substance, that will form the substance of your answer. Unless you do this, you cannot have a substance. Then of course, how do you present it? In a good legible handwriting, highlighting various important things in your write-up, draw diagrams correctly, and quote recent advances and references. That is your presentation. So if you have good substance and good presentation, you're likely to succeed. And so it's important not only have the substance, you should be presenting it well also. So when you succeed, and I'm sure most of you will succeed, the lovely and the lifelong journey of learning continues. So this is what all I had to say. I don't know whether I have, I have something new to say or whether I just put the old wine in a new bottle. But as long as the wine, wine Thank you for your attention. Thank you, sir, for your uh, guidance, tips and tricks, whatever you have given to the students. Is there anything you want to add regarding the question papers and the setting of the questions? Any little deficiencies on the part of the new examiners? Uh, I would say I think most of them are fine, except I did find that some of the questions are not only difficult, complex, but it's difficult to cover it in a given time. Otherwise, I don't think uh, most of the time they are quite reasonable and uh, I'm sure most of them could be answered. I'm sure there are a lot of, as I said, Mahaburis are sitting in the chair and the panel. They should come out with their points. Of view. Yeah, I the think... Any, any, I request the students to pose their difficulties, what they face in the examination, so that uh, Professor Ayengar as well as other senior teachers will be able to guide you. If any uh, of your difficulties, if you just send the questions, probably we'll be able to answer yeah, them as far as possible. Well, and now, well, yeah, well, now, this topic well. is for discussion. I now request uh, our uh, co-moderators, Dr. Padmanabh Kamath, Dr. Padma Kumar, as well as our uh, chairpersons, Dr. Prabhavati is there, Dr. P.K. Dash, a senior man in the field of uh, cardiology, as well as Dr. Vijay Raghav Rao, again uh, another person who is a HOD of cardiology at Gandhi Medical College. I now request you to just two, two minutes of your uh, tips and tricks, what you want to give to the students, 
how to write the theory answers. One uh, by one. Sir, I, can I speak, Sir Dr. Okay. Das? I'm sure. Uh, good evening to everybody. Yes. So, so I must tell that Professor Ayengar has uh, presented so nicely. As if no, the uh, the candidates entering the DM course, DM course, and uh, exiting also. <laughs> so nicely, uh, he has uh, advised, and he has covered everything. How to write a theory paper? He write everything. He has covered everything. Nothing left. So only thing he, uh, I want to uh, tell here that uh, on few occasions I I got a chance to share the question papers in DM and DNB. There is a you know there is instruction for us to give. Right or set questions on common clinical problem. The seventy percent of the seventy percent total questions will be common clinical problem, as uh, Professor Anger told. Very strong questions, and twenty percent, twenty thirty percent, little little unfamiliar. So they say seventy percent is ought to know, and twenty percent you should know, and ten percent good to know. So good to know is really very difficult. So many times uh, the candidates uh, they cannot attempt, but if they can attempt, as Professor Anger told, they attempt, and here the examiners usually become generous with marks. If you don't end, don't attempt, you won't get any mark. You write something, just so recollect it, write something, guess something, write. Even if you write a wrong thing, also you'll get some mark because they, we, do, we don't know also the answer also. Understand? So. So seven percent. I say I always tell my students. I used to tell them, seven percent is stock questions like your, you know, like your market viability, uh, card remodeling, like this, and uh, um, um, heart failure management, common questions. So you try to read it and prepare it so that you should get eight out of ten minimum. Minimum eight out of ten. I've got nine marks or so out of ten. So seven question if you can write properly seven to eight mark to keep so all, almost you're reaching now fifty six marks now. So only your, your second pass pass mark. If you write seven, if you prepare seven common questions, usually I write it in better way. And other on family question three questions two to three questions, if you attempt, you definitely get definitely get pass mark. So always focus on always remember always remember this. You have to prepare the common questions in exam, and prepare it, note, make notes, and try to practice. You should be able to write in 18 minutes because 10 questions in DNB. Nowadays also DM also took small, I mean short questions coming, yes. 10 questions. So 18 minutes for each questions, and always, uh, no, always keep a time in, you uh, know. So if you write on one question, take uh, one hour, then we have to definitely you have to. We can't attend all questions. And as I have told, we always don't straight away go to the question. You just out give outline. In the seminar, now we give outline, introduction, uh, no introduction, pathophysiology, uh, mechanism actions, uh, the presentation, diagnosis, like this. Make outline. If you give outline, as I have told, the examiner think that the, the boy, the the candidates know the subject, and also we can answer in organized manner. So always give outline and definition first important introduction definition definition you can give in uh, write you write in points and next thing when come to main subject always gives visuals visuals means so graphs and uh, diagram flowchart so I have seen many candidates lack of time they give flowcharts usually give give pass mark to them they are not written any text but they give flow flowchart they give flow whole question is flow flowchart. So they they secure the pass mark. So uh, visuals and uh, highlight the important things and give research references and if possible give the references. If you give research references, with the references will score more mark. If it is correctly given. And finally, so you try to give a conclusion. Conclusion. Sometimes we we don't read so much things. We read the conclusion and introduction. Because time is so short, and uh, because we have to see, you know, one day, sixty uh, papers, thirty papers. So you have to just you have to just you know, you have to just um, 
go through the pages only. So if you interested very nicely and you highlighted the main important things and giving good conclusion, you are definitely will you score more. Thank you, thank you, thank sir. you Professor Das, for your uh, nice uh, this thing guidance to the students. Now I request uh, other chairperson, Dr. Prabhavati. Good evening, sir. Good evening to everybody. Uh, it was an excellent talk by Dr. Ayengar, sir. Uh, I think tendency of the students is not to read during the first, uh, as sir told, it should be a long term, but most of them, the tendency, they don't read in the first year, second year. They only prepare for some seminar, then they forget it. So I think we should, we should have some kind of examination every three months or so to Prepare them for the exam. What do you say, sir? Are they overburdened in the words? Are they not getting time to read or what? Where are the difficulties? Have you asked the students why they did not fare well any time? I just want to know why they did not fare well. Hello? Uh, Who are you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Prabhati wants to know whether they should have frequent examinations. But I think uh, the DMB holds once a year, I think, appraisal. Uh, that should be good enough. Every three months, maybe, yes. maybe too much. Yeah. Prefer probably once a year, some short examination, uh, daily examination, and practical. I think once a year should be enough. Yeah. Rest of the times, I think uh, they should be quizzed during the rounds. Yes. Procedures in the lab. You know, during a procedure, you can always ask a question to him. Yes. In the rounds, you can ask so many questions. So that's the other way of preparing them for the exam. Yes. Thank you. Uh, 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 just to comment, sir. Yeah. yeah. The writing habit also they should develop, sir. They yes, will otherwise yes. yeah, will not come on the day of exam. So they should practice <laughs> nowadays. They just, uh, everything is on the online. They <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Uh, yes. Sir, what you said is, right, sir. In Sri Chitra, we, at the end of one and a half years, we had to, uh, the, the basic sciences, we had to do it, sir. So essentially, we had to cover Braunwald once. And like you rightly said, that was a detailed exam uh, we had to take. And that was a good uh, theory. I think uh, it made us cover the theory in that one and a half years. So we could uh, read up most of the things. And like you rightly said, I find even our candidates, it's the last three to four months, they find they've got so much to cover. And especially in, uh, the congenital gets pushed to the end. And, uh, you know, uh, and of course, they complain that duties are more, I think duties have been there even in our time also, but now they complain that uh, probably their ward work is more and the CCU duties are more, night duties are more. But I think uh, still, uh, like you rightly said, sir, the extra effort has to be put in, uh, whatever. And like you rightly said, uh, with their uh, time in the evening uh, should be spent as usefully as possible. I used to uh, I used to conduct theory exam actually in the final students DM DNB. Yes, sir. Uh, once in a month, I give them ten questions. Correct. So Correct. every month, so yeah, they write, and I used to see those things also. Correct. So, that's a good. That's a very good, that's thing. A good thing. Yeah. That's a very good idea, sir. At least yeah. once in three months, one month, two hours they can spend. Yes, madam. Can't hear you clearly, madam. Can you please? Yes, madam. Can you say it once, once in three months. You can you say it again, madam? Didn't hear you properly. No, no, I said at least once in three months. Yeah, yeah. that's a good idea. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. One Even month. if you give a yeah, little one. bit, yeah. Absolutely, man. They will develop that habit of writing. Yeah, develop the habit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the comments. And uh, I now request <laughs> Dr. Vijay Raghav Rao, Padmanabh Kamath, anybody? I request you to... Hello? Unmute. Yeah. Yes, I am here, sir. Yeah. Uh, Good evening, uh, I, everybody. Yes. yes. Uh, I uh, very much congratulate and appreciate Dr. Oh, yeah. uh, muted again. Huh.
You're muted, Dr. Rao. You're muted. Uh, kindly unmute yourself, Dr. Vijay Raghurao. Uh, meanwhile, Dr. Kamath can... Yeah. Sir, thank you. It was an excellent talk, sir. Very crisp and uh, to the point. And uh, uh, let uh, let me congratulate you for uh, taking up this uh, task because very seldom we see senior examiners, you know, legends like you in the field of cardiology take up a topic which is so simple, but uh, you have taken it with uh, so pa passionately and uh, you know made it so palatable for the candidates. Um, I I know you know passing is easy in cardiology provided you apply your common sense and i what i liked in your slide was the first slide be mm. sincere and honest if a person is sincere and honest and if he is competent he will pass sincerity and honesty is the most important thing i am not saying in sincerity only in ward work sincerity in every walk of life mm. be it ward mm. work clinical work or for that matter, any personal work, interpersonal relationship, everything. I really, that one slide stole everything. Sir. What I, I have stored mm -hmm. that slide from yours because that is what is required. To become a good cardiologist, first you have to become a good, good human being. And of course, rest all you have taught in your slides. People have to implement it rather than just uh, storing the slides and collecting the resources. You have to implement it. Sir, I've sent you one slide by mail. Can you project it, sir? Because I'm not able to share the screen. I have sent you, Ayangar, uh, sir. Ah, okay. I have sent I'll you one it. slide by mail. Can you just ah. uh, uh, show it to the students? I will just comment on that. I will try to see. One slide I have sent you. Okay, I'll try. Meanwhile, this is what I prepared in Vellore as a oh. student. In the year 2003 and 2004, you were my examiner. Let me recall <laughs> my student days and you were my examiner and I appeared as a candidate in front of you and rest is history. But I want to just help the candidates how to prepare for theory. See, for practical, I cannot teach them how to prepare for practical. They have to learn, master the art. But theory, I can, pre I can show how I prepared myself. So one slide I have sent you sir, by mail. Actually, I, try to, I try to collect that in the meantime. Dr. Patil, you take questions from the yeah, yeah, chat, yes, box, chat box. Chat uh, box. They, uh, yeah. oh, Dr. Patil, can yeah. you hear me? Yeah, Dr. Dr. Patil, can we are able me? to hear you. Yeah. Can, can you see my slides? I have one, two, two slides. No, no, no. We are unable to see your slides. Okay, I'll try again. I'll try again. Shall I try now? Yeah, you can. You can. Yes, sir, you can. You have given permission, sir. It will be in the end of the slide show. I think they share screen with a PowerPoint background, then you have to share the screen. Share. Can we meantime uh, uh, take up the questions, Dr. Vijayaravaram? Yeah, you can take it. I will try. Yeah, to. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sir, uh, there is a question. <laughs> Professor Ayengar? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what all to write in the lab? Of course, you have already told long questions. Yeah, long question. I think Dr. Dash mentioned very clearly. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are able yeah, to hear. What you should do is uh, again based on the topic, you will start with the introduction, then of course definition, then the substance, then uh, the conclusion. So you might make those headlines, and depending on the topic, you can always write it like any other. And again, uh, you have time. As I mentioned, we we'll talk about the challenges. We we'll talk about the future. So there's a mini article, if you see, these are the topics you introduction, then the main substance, then you conclude, in conclusion, and then next, you could always add what are the future challenges you could be faced in this particular field. And somebody has asked me how to remember the trials, names, etc. It is not, nobody will be penalized, you don't remember the 
some minor trials, but some major trials will have to sort of make a note and keep it ready. You may not mention the year and volume of the journal, but if you have mentioned the, particularly the, the trial name and what it did, as I mentioned, the substance is more important than giving you the other details. Uh, I think uh, any more questions in that chat box? Yeah, there's some question was there, I think. Can you hear me, Patil? Yes, sir, we can, we can hear you, sir. We can hear yeah. you, sir. We can hear you, sir. One more, yeah, one more question was, I think, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, the chat box. Yeah, sir. Some of the topics are not in the textbooks and yes, some sir. questions are asked in the examination. So that is the idea of reading the journals. You know, uh, they can't give anything other than what is there in the textbook and what has appeared in the journals. So you have to keep track of some of these important journals. As I mentioned, some major cardiology journals, uh, including uh, uh, some Indian journals and uh, major textbooks. I think they should cover everything. It will be very rare that they will ask something out of this. Yeah, I think these are a few questions I saw in the chat box. Is there anything else? Uh, maybe somebody else can take it up. I'm trying to retrieve Dr. Padmala Kaman's slide. I'm not trying, not been successful so far. Hello. Vijayra Gaurav, you are muted again. But if there any other question on the line, you see. Uh, I some hazard ratio, all these things, are they required? They have written. I don't think they are all. Uh, <laughs> you should be no, able to. No, no. Yeah. It will be required. So if you see statistics, and there are only few. Just set questions in your exam. If you go through the previous they need to write hazard ratio, no. confidence interval values. Yeah, values. No, 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 no. Ah, that's what I'm telling Absolutely you. Absolutely not. You just write yeah. whether it is significant or not significant. Yes, that's all. That is good enough. Yes. Yeah, I think the major RCTs and the review articles they are very very important. That yes. you are uh, supposed to read from the major journals. And uh, uh, Padmanabh Kamat? I'm trying to take this slide. I got it. I'll just try to project it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dr. Padma Kumar, can you give your input, sir? Yes, nice talk, sir. I was listening ah. to your talk. I think I hope I was wondering whether it, it would have helped me much more when my student days if I had listened to you. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, one point I wanted to highlight was that when we people write uh, answers, uh, yeah. there are 10 good points that they mentioned. There are two points which are factually incorrect, which they mentioned. And somehow they get penalized for that. That impression that they create with the correct points get uh, faded by one or two factual errors that they may make while writing the answer. Oh, so it's yeah. better to take care to avoid factual errors. <laughs> Yes. So because the examiner gets uh, his eyes goes to the towards the mistakes rather than the points that he has written. So always take care to avoid factual errors when you're writing long questions. That is one advice I wanted to give them. Yeah, that's a good idea. Thank you, thank you, Padma Kumar. Okay. Uh, and and uh, one more thing before writing a question, uh, just to spend a minute uh, what you are going to write about that question. Like for example. Suppose uh, somebody is asking you to differentiate between constitutive pericarditis and restrictive cardiomyopathy. Instead of starting writing, jumping and writing, just to think what you're going to write, like the hemodynamics, then clinical aspect, then uh, you know, how you differentiate by your routine investigation, echo, cat, uh, everything separate, now CT, MR, everything. So you just think a minute and then start writing so that you don't miss any important points. That also yeah. I want. Yeah. Very good points for yeah. this note. Yeah. Never make any factual errors. If yeah, not, yeah. I think better not to mention that for sure. Yes. Thank you, Vijay Raghura. Are you ready? Hello? Somehow we are unable to contact you. 
Any other questions from the students? I don't think anything is there now. Yeah, I this, uh, covered, uh, sir. Yeah, Dr. Mm. Yeah. slides I've got, I'm just trying to project it. Yeah, you can project it. Minutes. Dr. Nagaraj Desa is there. He's coming. Yeah, I think uh, Dr. Nagaraj Desa is there. Oh, Dr. Iyengar. Yeah. It was a uh, very excellent, um, you know, kind of principles of uh, writing a good uh, theory answer. Indeed, there's nothing like overnight preparation, as you rightly said. It requires, uh, you know, toiling. It requires to practice. It requires self-criticism or criticism by his mentor. Mm -hmm. You know, we do not find nowadays uh, that kind of mentorship that at least I can, uh, whatever um, students that I keep getting interaction with. Indeed, you know, they have to have their own groups. I remember, you know, when I was a DM student where a group of four would get together every, you know, third or fourth yes, day okay. to discuss case okay. in informal groups. Yes. Thank you so much for that wonderful okay. opportunity to listen to you once again. Yeah. Bye. Thanks, Dr. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Dr. Patil, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are able to hear. Yeah. Sure. Just I will try to put some slide if yeah. you have... yeah, can... save. Save. save it. Okay, I think the slides are some. Okay, uh, yeah. 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 I will tell you. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Um, sir, you can try now, sir. Sorry, there was some problem. Just try now, sir. Share screen. Share screen. Sir, sir, in the meantime, you you could get this slide. I got it. I'm just trying to. Share screen is not coming. Not coming, eh? Yes. Absurd, uh, you allowed uh, him as a co-host? Yes, sir. I yes, sir. Actually, sir has uh, shared his screen, sir. Just, uh, hmm. sir has to upload the uh, PPT, sir. Already, he is ah. sharing the screen. Only thing is, uh, he has to upload the PPT in the background. Sir. Yeah, yeah. Only one to eat. Sir, can you re-upload, sir, Hello. the PPT? Okay, okay. Uh, it has come, it has, it has come, one second. Yeah, sir, we can see the screen, sir, now. Yes, sir. Yeah, DNB, DM theory, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are able to see the slide. Okay. Okay. Sir, you can enlarge the yeah. thing. And, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah. Dr. he has already elaborated everything. Only thing is, I want to share a few things. Yeah. Uh, as a student, as well as a teacher, some I had some experience. For Dr. Anger has already said about the writing, right? The writing should be legible and paced. That means the speed should be there. I started uh, practicing my writing when I was in the MD in All India Institute because uh, I made it in that uh, every day I used to write one paper, mm. uh, one paper, and uh, how much I covered in one paper. Each paper used to have about 22 lines, right? So in the, every day, for example, the first day I had five minutes. Every day I tried to improve it for three minutes and like that. And it should be legible also. This should be practiced not only from the undergraduate, postgraduate, as well as from the DM also, right? Then the second thing is Dr. Anger has also said for each question, you try to give history point of view, whoever is whatever the, as far as possible, history should be mentioned briefly, the year and the person who has discovered or invented and the references also. Just like in the case of uh, thesis, for discussion we write, no, regard, quote the, the references, as far as possible, if the references should be, should be quoted. And uh, this was uh, initiated for me when I was in Delhi by Dr. P. D. Nigam, at present he was the professor of cardiology. He said, 
in md exams most of the people they don't write it but you try to to quote as far as possible for each course try to quote at least one reference that will give you a very good impression and also for the examiner will get a little bit more marks and regarding the figures he has already said the line line diagrams and uh, the more important is flow chart because we, we when we analyze it in 2017 dnb questions there were structured questions each each question is having a minimum three bits so what happens is 10 means it are nearly about nearly 30 bits so we have to calculate it we cannot write everything for uh, so if you put on the flow charts legibly flow charts that will explain everything right then second thing is the planning also should be there because each paper is having one uh, we are allowed 180 questions and uh, we have to answer 10 questions in 10 questions means at least we have to review it like 30 minutes should be available for the review as far as i think 30 minutes should be there so in 30 minutes means from 180 we will have 150 minutes and so each question should be answered including the diagrams all everything by 15 minutes try to follow 15 minutes and you should be have headings and subheadings underlying it that is thing for example just i want to quote some example for example the one question was given in the uh, 2017 splitting of second sound so splitting of second sound means first we have to as a, what is the normal physiology and here in bracket I have written here the protein who has a, in years you have found out and discovered in 1866 so one line it is that will give a very added marks should be there and what is the reason for a normal physiological splitting for example delay p2 and early occurrence then hang hang out interval and just one diagram then abnormal splitting abnormal splitting means this is one of the three bits so in one bit we can't go on writing it if you put the flow chart here for example all the cause causes are there for example white split white fixed split reverse split narrow split what are the causes also we are written so it will be i feel that the examiner also will understood that he knows the the topic or he knows the subject right then uh, then valsalva manuel uh, dr anger has also uh, elaborated it so what i want to tell you the only the history part also should be that if, for example who has discovered he has discovered the by maria valsalva in 1705 so as far as possible try to uh, give the discovery or invention and briefly of course that he has already explained it and uh, and phases of course he has already given normal phases and then also the clinically and uh, all those things should be there lastly as far as possible the normal curve and uh, the curve in the case of uh, heart failure should also that's the thing i wanted to tell and then lastly preparation he has rightly quoted dr anger has rightly quoted preparation long term preparation and all those things so generally we follow the one standard textbook and to the to on the top of it we have to use the journals also as far as at least one journal should be also should be regularly seen it and whatever the findings are there in the journal we should write on that on the paper and stick it to the the inter textbook so it will be become easier so a text we cannot give so journals will give the recent advances and all those things that we can quote it there in the itself so when you are again you are reviewing it it, it becomes a one of the good things that you are already seen the journals plus as well as the theory part of the textbooks also should be that with also should be there so this is the few things i wanted to uh, share 
my experience as a student as well as a, a teacher. And the last thing is, presently, I, mean, I am not in Gandhi Medical College. I am in SVS Medical College, Pebbulnagar. It is about uh, 90 kilometers from Hyderabad. I was there at the HOD and all those things. When I was in Gandhi only, I published that uh, clinical examination cardiology as well as ECG book also. This is being followed by the DM, DND students also as far as clinical cardiology. Sir. Thank you. Thank you for Thank you all the much. tips what you have given to the students. I think we have anybody else, uh, any senior teachers who want to add a word or two? Yeah. Are you? There is something in the chat box. Yeah. Uh, there is one chat box. Uh, Dr. Dr. Roy has written. So it might be useful for the students. Yeah. Uh, answer for the students' doubt on how to answer trials. So he says use. Uh, some picot, yeah. P I C O T. Wanted to answer few students' doubt on how to answer trials. Use P I C O T analysis, patient intervention, comparison, outcome, and time. So that you mention the trial in general. Also, write, uh, yeah, S W O T. Analysis. Yeah. Analysis, strengths, strengths, strengths weaknesses. weaknesses. Yeah. Definitely, all these points are important yeah. in analyzing a trial. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Sudhakar, for your uh, tips. And there's one question. Uh, uh, I have just one question. Do we take into account the empathetic aspects of one's practice when judging a student on the day of clinical assessment examination, assuming the knowledge is fair to current practice and ideas? I think examiner probably is uh, empathetic as long as I think this is my view, of course, there may be different view. I know when I once I am sure that this particular candidate can take care of the cardiac patient, can manage and will not do any harm to the patient. Yeah. Fit to pass the exam. Yeah. Thank you. So sir. just Thank a you. comment on uh, congenital uh, questions. Huh. I find that uh, at least some of the candidates since they read in the end only uh, the pathophysiology is something you know I, I tell them always you start off with the definition say for example you're given uh, uh, truncus arteriosus uh, you should say what is truncus arteriosus then give the classification and as Dr. Uh, Vijay Rao was mentioning the, the important classification call it Edwards classification yeah. and line diagrams and especially pathophysiology uh, uh, many of the students, of course, we also, uh, as teachers, we do explain to them, but I think the pathophysiology is something which uh, I think most examiners ex expect them to understand. And then, of course, the clinical features and the way to diagnose, and as you rightly said, the current methods, echo, then now CT angio is becoming more and more important, say, in such a condition. So, like you rightly said, if they give all the headings and even write briefly on each point, then we know they've understood the the topic uh, thoroughly and it is uh, so they get uh, seven to eight marks uh, definitely we would mark them as per you know each one's uh, answer yeah thank uh, you yes. Dr. Kamat is there yeah he is yeah there. yeah just just i i thought of uh, just showing this uh, yeah, uh, which is prepared 20 years ago oh, oh my yeah. fantastic yes <laughs> this is 2002 Oh, and, uh, complicated. I have, I have, I have preserved all those notes, and uh, just want to, just want to highlight. Are we prepared? Just yeah. want to highlight yeah. how a yeah. theory can be answered with the uh, good illustrated pictures and schematic diagrams. Mm -hmm. So yes. the question, the question was conduction system of the heart, and if you see this picture, you will, you will see almost everything in one picture. At one glance, you can get everything. Conduction system of the heart is simplified in one picture, and this is more than sufficient. Just one one day before the exam, you have to just go through these uh, notes, and you will know you can recapitulate everything what you have studied in the last three years. And uh, uh, you know, uh, and this is how a notes has to be prepared. It should be more illustrative and also schematic, as uh, all the speakers said, more bar diagrams, flow charts, and make it more pictorial. So, uh, just wanted to show uh, what uh, theory preparation is all about. It is all hard work. And I'm sure, you know, 
all of you have got uh, the talent in you you people and you you all will do well in the exams our best wishes are there uh, if there are no more questions and i am i am given the task of uh, concluding remark and the thanks giving uh, i thank dr ss sangar for making this talk so simple and uh, and useful and palatable for all the students there was a record audience who attended yes. today more than 120 i think 136 was the figure i saw yeah. uh, that, that again shows the interest in the topic and also the interest in the person who is giving the talk people know uh, the utility and the usefulness of this uh, talk I, i i thank dr s sangar for making it so simple for the candidates i thank all the panelists and moderators who are there today most of them are my teachers they have been kind enough to accept with short notice uh, a topic which was once thought uh, you know very archaic but now it's taken a front uh, you know uh, it has taken a front seat now people know the importance of theory without theory you cannot give practical exam so it has become a basically a waterloo for all the students who are giving the dm or dnb exams i thank all the moderators and panelists for taking part in this very productive discussion and uh, last but not the least all those who attended the students and uh, the uh, coach uh, no uh, my colleagues my seniors dr ravi narayan and also those two doctors who helped uh, dr s sangar uh, uh, dr tiny nair and uh, one more name i forgot <laughs> sir <laughs> <Mr>. <laughs> Ah, Kiran, yeah, 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 yeah. Kiran Wag is from Saint John's. I think these two are also need to be complimented yes. for you know helping, if not directly, indirectly. Uh, I thank both yes. Kiran Wag sir and also Tiny Nair sir for uh, uh, pitching in with their contribution, and uh, of course uh, uh, the Manipal Hospitals for providing such an excellent platform in the form of Zoom for a productive discussion. If I missed out anyone, uh, uh, it is it is uh, unintentional. and i thank uh, all of you thank dr you. patel dr yeah. patel one minute just i want to share one information yeah just like in the case of md exams most of the universities they are conducting every year internal assessment and uh, in our university also they started having for uh, super specialties also every year they are conducting uh, giving the some uh, topics and then conduct internal ass- assessment also not university but internal assessment also the directions will be coming from the university only they give the dates for example at the end of the one year they give some dates so this will be the md general medicine this will be the dm cardiology they give the dates so on that day only they are conducting it every year i think that also dnd people also i think they are going to start i think for for uh, uh post graduation i think it is there in the dnb yeah in the curriculum itself it is there is there, is there. yeah but yeah. for as a super specialty i don't know that yeah, yeah. thank know. thanks for your uh, whatever yeah. thank you very much for having participated i thank everybody including of course professor ayangar is the hmm, yeah who has uh, made this uh, very successful one and given lot of tips thank you very much sir everybody <laughs> all the moderators <laughs> chair persons and all the students and my colleagues thank you good thank night you. good night thank you sir thank you thank you, you. thanks